Something as small as little particles and animations is what Roblox devs use to keep you addicted to their game. This is part 4 to a series where I give myself some coding challenges that relate to smooth effects to enhance your games and show everything needed to make them. Okay guys, so for this first effect, I'm going to make a system where you click on a button and it has this little animation where it clones itself and then tweens out and it disappears. And this will also work with images where it'll basically destroy the image in it or the image it has and it'll look all nice. And as usual, we are going to be doing this using module scripts. Okay guys, so this should be our script done. Basically, if you've watched my previous parts on this series, I made a button animation, you know, where you hover your cursor over a button, it gets bigger, you know, the click animation, but I'm, I'm doing the same thing here, but I'm building off of it where you click it, it clones the button, and it makes it look all nice and fade out. So now to make this work, we are also cleaning up everything if the button uh, is being destroyed. Now we need to add the buttons to this animate function. Or you could also think of this function as add. You could call it add because you are adding the button to the animation. You could also think of it that way. So basically what we're going to do now is in our starter UI, we're going to insert a local script and we're going to call it UI animation and then get our UI animation, get the player and also get the player's UI. Just like this. And then, then we can loop through all the buttons in the player's player's UI. We're going to do right off the bat and check if the button is a UI button. And then button animation dot add or whatever you want to call it and add your button. And you could also, if you really wanted to, put player GUI get descendants so it, it loops through all of the player's GUI instead. And I'm also just now realizing is I never changed the event names for this. So for this, for connection four I have down here, we're going to change this to mouse leave. This one to mouse enter. Back up here, we want to change this to mouse button one up. And then now... If we go into our game with our buttons here already made, you see we have this little animation for each of the buttons. And when we click on it, huh? oh, <laughs> I, I messed something up. All right, guys, so I think I found the issue here. In connection to, I forgot to say if not debounce instead of just checking for the debounce. So if I'm right, this will work. So we click. And there's that nice little effect. It kind of zooms out the button and we get this cool effect. We can do the same thing with this one. And mind you, the color of the clone, like the, the effect, goes off of the background color. So for our button, if we were to change this to a maybe a red or something like that the background will also be red like you can see here all right so one of the things you guys wanted to see is a smooth camera effect where we can basically call a function and zoom in onto an object and the comments are also put for example boba cafe's menu boards i'll put that up on screen where the camera basically zooms in onto the menu or you know the menu board so we are going to be doing that using module scripts all right guys so this is our script 
done we are basically checking if we have the information needed to make the tween over here we are setting the camera types to scriptable so we can actually change the camera c frame or position and then here we are calculating the offset the offset distance based on the part size and orientation so you know maybe we wanted to zoom in on a huge object well our using any other system our camera would just zoom in on the center of the object but using some distance and direction we can make it so no matter the size or anything like that it will always look good and there is this multiplier 1.5 here I'll get into that in just a second but this can be actually pretty useful and then we are creating a target c-frame plugging it all into tween service with the camera the tween info our target c-frame and then we are tweening it and then there is also an additional feature i added here is wait for completion where if you put in true then the code will basically stop until the tween has been completed so this menu board that I just found from the toolbox will be our example of the Boba Cafe menu board. So it will zoom our camera from our character to our menu board. And then I can just real quick type up some code to make this all work. Okay guys, so I just forgot about something that I should have done when I was first coding the camera zoom thing and that is adding a reset feature to basically reset our camera back to the character. And this is really simple, I don't even know how I forgot to do this, but you just want to make a new function, call it reset, and then set the camera type back to enum.cameratype.custom and if you check custom it says default mode used by roblox core scripts which basically just makes it so the camera goes back to what roblox does and configures with the camera so now back in this script as i was working on it we are going to wait three seconds and then call reset and everything should now work so now head into your game we can just go in right here and then wait a few seconds and as you can see it zooms in on the menu board and then after a few seconds it also resets now I think if we got rid of this wait as soon as the zoom is done because we are waiting for the completion uh, right here then it should reset as soon as the tween is done but we can see zooms and then yeah it immediately uh, resets so another cool thing about this is if we go from a long distance or onto the side here it will oh <laughs> i forgot to add a weight but it basically uh zooms in from that angle which may cause problems depending on where you are see it zooms in from the character from the same angle so maybe we could do something like this out in the distance maybe something like that it looks a little bit quirky, sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. As you can see, it works here with this scenario. Okay, so last video, I made an orb system where it spawned two orbs around your character and they followed you as you walked around. For this system, I would like to expand on that and I want it to be a little bit more customized, a little bit more modular. And what i'm going to do is basically revise that script and make it so we can have an infinite amount of orbs rotating around our character we can send in a orb template if we wanted a different orb uh maybe we wanted to change the distance cycle duration all of that from a module script so instead of it being like a electric orb i came up with a fire orb like you see here all the particles for this orb if you guys want to take a look uh, we have a trail as well I this is the trail it, it's nothing too special basically the same trail as last video but with a slightly different color maybe you can make the trail look like some smoke if you really want it so you guys can get creative with it but all these particles if you go to the toolbox and just search up particles you can just click on one and find some fire particles that you can use for the orb.
because you know i'm a scripter i do not make particles so let's get to scripting it all right so i've once again uh, put the extra math, you know, like the multiplying cframe.new and all that stuff uh, down here so you guys can see it a little bit better. But as you can see here, we have a whole bunch of information we can send in the character, the orb template, the number of orbs we want, the distance, and the cycle duration, which we will also get into in a second. We are cloning the orbs, putting them in a table, and then every frame we are calculating the position and the spacing, the alpha, everything like that, and then requiring the module script, everything should work. And another thing I haven't told you guys is with the orbs, I also have some particles that we can put on the character. So if I go to the humanoid root part and insert these particles, these particles will be on the humanoid root part along with the orbs. So we're going to toss him over there and I already have the folder. We're going to toss that in replicated storage. It's just a whole bunch of fire particles and you guys probably already guessed it. They're from the toolbox <laughs> from a pack. And so what we're going to do is go to starter character scripts, insert a local script, and then get this final script done. So here is the script to make the orbs done. These are just random values I put in. So we're going to start off with three orbs, uh, eight studs away from the character's humanoid root part, and then two seconds for each orb to make it around the character. So heading into our game, particles should be on our character. Oh, <laughs> well, they're not here yet. Maybe I screwed up. But as you can see, we now have these three fireballs or orbs following us around and they look pretty cool well you know guys i always wondered why my stuff wasn't working maybe it's because i never called the function oh boy all right so now we called it and then now everything should work and as we can see there is flames around our character also with the orbs and everything looks really cool. Now let's get to messing around with the system here. Now this could be an infinite number of orbs, right? But obviously we don't want to do that. It would crash our game. Let's go up to maybe 20. And since there's 20 orbs, it, it'll need a lot more space. So the distance, I'm going to say 20 as well. Maybe 30. And then the cycle duration, since there are so many orbs, it'll basically make it look like it's a huge ring. And we don't really want that. We're going to set this to maybe 0 0.3. And we're just going to see how this looks. So, oh boy, <laughs> this is what I meant by a big ring. There are so many orbs. And this is basically what it looks like. So guys, I was messing around with the numbers and make trying to make it the amount of orbs look normal but i said i have these values and basically this is what we get pretty insane so i don't think it'll work with a lot of orbs so guys i was forgetting one thing in this system and that is the cycle duration i was putting this number extremely low and that's how we got what we just seen but we actually need to raise this number because you know obviously the higher number means takes longer to go around the character so if we put something maybe like five or so with 20 orbs and maybe a 25 distance we will have 20 orbs like you can see here and we can keep changing this so let's say we wanted 100 orbs and with a cycle duration of maybe 10 or 15 with the same distance you see now we have 100 orbs so i was getting one thing wrong and that was the cycle duration and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video Peace.